Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team pick. Faceless void. Newbies turn to pick. Season two, we're here. We're going to be taking a look at game number one, the last in the first round of the group stages. Well, rather not group stages, but first round of the playoffs, and it's newbie facing off against Vici Gaming Reborn. A little bit of a battle of Chinese Dota 2. I'm here with Dota joint as well. Mike Valoris, sir, how are you doing? You excited about the game? Dude, I'm excited about this game, and I mean, the matchup is great, but also after this matchup, winner of this faces up against LGD. <sighs> Like, it doesn't get any more, like, supreme Chinese Dota than that, so uh, I think that one's coming up later, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting match. Newbie, most people, I'd say, would favor, but uh, VG Gaming, they always pull out, like, some pretty crazy shit, so, uh, you know, don't put it past VG Gaming to take something uh, a little bit by surprise. We could already see the Drow Ranger being banned out first along with the Terra Blade. More kind of niche picks, and definitely uh, Drow Ranger, at least, a little bit more of a niche ban. Yeah, well, that's one of those ones that Vici Game and Reborn all throughout those open qualifiers, uh, not open qualifiers, excuse me, regional qualifiers, are running pretty consistently. Uh, they're taking the revenge early and running it with EDC there, and then they ended up uh, picking up in, in the games against Ehome, at least, like, first round Drow, even. Um, it was really impressive what they're capable of doing. And the other hero that they tended to work around was the Terrible, um, who was also just somebody else that, uh, across Chinese Dota, I feel like, and probably all the rest of the region, this stage as well, uh, has proven to be just one of the strongest players that they've got. I'm a little bit curious about the Faceless Void. I mean, again, it's somebody that uh, they, they certainly feel comfortable on. I've seen Yang run that before, uh, but we'll see how they end up doing with it now. Um, as far as the sort of general matchup is concerned, I, I'm expecting this each game and reborn to be a little bit more on the aggressive side, uh, and newbie kind of reacting to that already, have the Light Sealer and the Disruptor taken. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't really see Newbie uh, play Turbo aggressively all that much unless they get something like like a Bristleback pick for KP, and, and that's, of course, a very specific kind of game. But uh, for Vici, it does seem like that's more or less their style. Pretty much Drow Ranger and Terrorblade are always revolving around those timing pushes, and since they're out, it might be a slightly different game here for Vici, but it still seems like they may be building up towards that. They already have the Chrono Spear, Elder Titan, of course, is great in combination with that, and Phoenix should be uh, in the sights for uh, really yeah, either these two teams, you don't want to let VG Gaming get it if you're a newbie, and they might just want to pick it up themselves. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see an early bird pick up here for uh, for either of these squads. But Faceless Void, Elder Titan, Life Sealer Disruptor for newbie, it's it's pretty much as safe as you can get. Like one of the best, if not the best, uh, direct lane babysitters in the shutter and. Same thing with the life stealer. So uh yeah, you can't really fault newbie for going for the opening. It's it's very generic, Ten but that's not a bad main. thing. Yeah, and that's always I feel like the way that newbie want to try and play their dresses. They're playing very much around like we're gonna get what we get out of the laning stage and then eventually we're gonna group up and make moves across the map together or we'll respond to like an early rotation. When I think back to you know when newbie was just tearing their way through those manila major qualifiers, it was by virtue of four people rotating in to respond to a gank that would come to the mid lane, uh, or they'd be trying to jump in there and protect Moo, or possibly later on in the games they would have a Tidehunter on KP or something like that, uh, and then they'll secure early objectives, whether it's a tier 1 tower or possibly even a Roshan, and I, I think that it, it just feels always that Newbie has a game plan from start to finish in the way that they want to take it, and they're all dire, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them go back now for one of those Roshan uh, controlling heroes, since the, as you're talking about Phoenix is already banned out. Yeah, Slardar still in the pool, great up against that Roche, and I mean, it is okay match versus Vici, but uh, really is newbie. Probably should be looking for some sort of vehicle for the life at this stage, since the Phoenix otherwise would have taken that role. Uh, Ricky also would have taken that role, and uh, it's kind of surprising to see Ricky Five banned out in sec remain. phase instead of banned out first phase or first pick, but you know, whatever. The life slur does need some way of actually getting in because this is not actually the easiest game for a life sealer. He's facing up against Chronosphere, he's facing up against the time lock, uh, he's also facing up against the earth splitter, which you know, maybe isn't going to be as harsh as the Chronosphere, but as far as the life slur's game plan. I'm just going to hit things. Uh, you do have to play around just a little bit more with the opening uh, of Vici Gaming Reborn. So he does need a little bit of help. And Disruptor help isn't 
really quite enough. They they really do need either a ton of stuns so that Lifesteal has enough time to just sit there and right click his target down, or just, just a way to get Life Stealer into the fight immediately, as you know, per normal. Uh, something like a puck might be doing Ooh. both or batrider can also do both interesting I, i'm looking back through these games right now and uh, in the past month they've only played batrider twice and they haven't won a game with it but still feeling like it's the way that they want to go uh, i would agree with you a great vehicle for trying to jump in and find a kill it's worth noting that that's sort of segmented by the life stealer how he's played it 11 times over the past month and an 81 percent win rate on him like newbie obviously are going to have tilted win rates to their favor just because they're such a strong squad but i feel like this to me feels the first two picks in their wheelhouse and maybe the bat rider a little bit outside of it i'm curious to see how kp goes on this but i guess there's a chance that they could run move on as well it just doesn't feel very much like a move hero yeah i mean it is possible but i feel like right now it, it should be the plan to give it to give it to the offline to give it to kp and especially now that we have an oracle you don't really want to kind of quote unquote waste your mid lane hero on someone who could just get hard countered by the fact that there's false promise on the other end because then you know you could do decently in lane but if you're not actually gaining tempo in the medium then the hero isn't really doing what he's doing and then you're down a mid hero and you might also be down an offline hero as well so uh, yeah the oracle you yeah, have a pretty nice pick up against that bat rider and it's okay when you have an elder and okay with faceless void but this is really just to try to brick wall at that rider as much as possible so lasso no longer a huge opportunity uh for initiation here and you know, to a lesser extent open wounds is something that is purgeable so uh, usually i don't like oracle picks when there isn't a huge reason to pick up oracle like you're going up against a dark seer i would say yeah sure go for it but i think this is just enough to make this oracle pick uh, worth their while yeah, definitely. And I mean, there's the things that are like you're talking about the Batrider counter. It's a nice one. Um, one of the ways they could go for it also, we don't see Newbie take a DP right now. They could DP themselves on the side of Beachy Gaming Reborn. And it kind of does push their hand a little bit, Newbie, to at least respond to a certain extent uh, with that if they want to go for it. But. I'm not sure if that's the route that they want to go. It obviously has great synergy with the Life Stealer, but then I feel like you're revealing so much about this draft and then going to have to rely on a last pick support. But uh, by the same token, they're kind of a little bit behind if they just give that away. They're going to take the Earthshaker. Very interesting. That's not what I was expecting at all. I've gone on record several times saying I hate Earthshaker in this patch, <laughs> and I always i am kind of hoping to be proven wrong, but so far it hasn't been happening just yet. Uh, it seems like this may just be the support remaining. duo, and, and have enough stutteration so that you know Life Stealer, even though he you know does have that Bat Rider vehicle, doesn't really need it all that much as long as he is with some stuns, with some kinetic field action, with some glimpse or whatnot. So you know, there's a possibility for that. Alternatively, Shaker. I don't know, Shaker offlane, Batrider mid, is that really something you want to be doing? Especially up against now a Slark pick for Vici, which Earthshaker is going to struggle up against. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is kind of just the one of the problems with the hero. Like, if he actually is able to get a pretty clean start, no bounty hunters, no Rickies roaming on him, then yeah, he will have the chance of doing well. But even that is not guaranteed. Uh, Slark on the Vici gaming side is which not really slipper here to deal with this chapter is pretty good up against Stark, but uh he will have answers to pretty much everyone else on newbie yeah i'm, I'm wondering now if they end up going back for like a kp not sire as a last pick here it's something that they were running a while ago but as i'm looking at it i'm starting to see that they definitely need either a, somebody in the off lane is going to allow them to steal a ridiculous stage basically in the mid lane to be able to do so like seen a moon invoker or a kp uh siren but one of those needs to transition to like strong core they can't just for something like i don't think they need some image or some of the thing because otherwise it's just going to get completely out of control i'm i'm kind of leaning to keep now here i wouldn't hate particularly considering they banned out the dragon knight uh last we'll see Turn to and especially since they are going up against the Faceless Void, so just sing and walk away oh and God. good work. <laughs> Predictions 100%. Don't let that slip. So, yeah, I mean, this is go actually going to let them have their late game because Life Stealer, yeah, you can't move when you're also running a, a core Bat Rider. 
damage and also running like a four position enchantress or something like that which you know, i guess is something we have done before but this is also something that they've run before and it is in a pretty good position up against what vg have uh the naga siren just hard countering that faceless void chronosphere as long as she's not caught in it is going to have an incredible amount of space to farm in theory uh with a bat rider and life stealer getting those infest bombs so yeah this is pretty much newbie's comfort zone through and through Exception Shaker, I would say that you could probably replace that and I'd be a little bit more on board, but uh, I do feel like newbie have exactly what they want. Five seconds remaining. I was in the stage. I feel like it's going to really have to be as it always does on the Naga Siren and the Radiance Time. You know what? Since we're just getting started now, I'm going to try to get some trouble with it. Like, what are they going to be relying upon, do you think, as far as the lanes? Thirty seconds to battle. The battle begins. The prize is mine! Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of liking it. Again, we talked about the... It was a surprise pick, I would say, there, that last uh, Naga Siren, but with Mu running the Batrider, even though they kind of, I think, caught him off guard with this, I'm still sort of feeling like... I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of feeling like it's not exactly his type of hero. Whenever I think about what he runs, it tends to be more along the lines of, you know, something that's able to be pretty aggressive and also scale into the late game, that invoker or whatever else. But I guess we'll see how he ends up doing. The Night Siren versus Faceless Void matchup is also going to be a fairly interesting one, but I imagine a lot of action is going to be this bottom lane. All right, Earthshaker in this patch, it's working. Apparently Kaka knows what he needs to do. I was with you, I, I honestly, I didn't believe that Earthshaker is that great of a hero. We've seen it run a couple of times that I gaming, but um, I mean, Kaka making this hero work, it's still incredibly strong what he do in these early stages.
And I mean, I'm also looking at this, and every time Kaka ends up heading away from the lane to go and try and check a rune or whatever else he happens to do, Marana needs to be careful. And, you know, you made the point there about the base damage being a bit of an issue for this Nada, but he's doing a good job of being able to use all of the illusions to get last hits as well. So it kind of mitigates that problem slightly. And of course, the natural high armor 8 now at level 4 on the Naga Siren with the uh, 4 man shield up and online. Like, he, she is taking basically no damage at all. So. Still going to be able to get her levels and might even be able to get a decent chunk of farm. You can see that she is already rolling pretty effectively. I'm sort of concerned right here for Vici Gaming Reborn because if they don't get off to that ass start, what are they really going to do late game against this? I mean, there's ways to deal damage to the Naga Siren, but it's just such a scary hero to deal with. Mikasa battling again against Mu here and come and try and get the rune, but unfortunately he's uh, actually used his leap and Mikasa might be in a lot of trouble. There's the flame right back and this could be second bloody. He's not being able to pop stick charges. Kaka not even needed for that fissure, but that kill is always going to kill. And then take a look at this. Regen rune on the top. Like, this is the best start right here that Mu could have hoped for. I'm seeing right now that Mikasa is going to end up rotating out. They don't spot him there at the Batrider, so they might realize that something's going on. They're not going to be able to catch how though. And Nubia is just playing this, like, so carefully. Okay, now we're going to end up going for FY a little bit, realizing that the stop was on cooldown. And Mikasa is heading back towards the mid lane, so maybe Slark a little bit out of position, thinking about the wounds. There's the Fissure instead on the DDC. Not going to be able to keep him there, and there's the Glimpse back. And in a little bit of trouble, he's going to be able to escape for the moment. The stomp to count this out, and it looks like with that, all of the battle is going to disengage, but still a, a full lane of creeps here is going to end up going away of newbie. The trail lane is working. I mean, you look at all of those, and they're just dominating each of them. Uh, Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, he's he's just back. Like they're always keeping like really good because as, as soon as there's suddenly supports missing down bottom. Everybody plays really carefully. You see up in the top lane, you've got the Naga Siren, 
heads off into the jungle, still has the infused right drops now, and is playing this just safe as can be. Mid lane Mu is going to end up rotating to the bottom side because he knew that Mikasa was there on top, and I mean, they're just playing this so carefully and so cleanly. This to me is the like epitome of newbie Dota, is that they just end up leading until they hit these timings really effectively, they know when they're stronger, and then they take the fights they know that they're going to win, and they don't overextend. And now you're going to end up seeing them thinking about even diving the tier 1 tower here, Zip, and he's in a lot of trouble, and I think that he might just go down. Uh, he's level 5, he doesn't have his level 6 up, and yet Taka's still looking. Oh no, yep, this is a problem. Alright, Kaka chasing, DC is over there as well, they're going to end up TPing in a couple of heroes, so this is going to end up bringing 3 down, the clips away, because is now on a longer with them and they might be able to get to this fight. Fissure ends up being able to hit on the two. They do have an Echo Swap if they want to throw it. DDC dropping low and he is going to die. And I think Kaka can just walk out. They are just running circles around him. Radiant structures are fortified. Oh. <laughs> Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. <laughs> this is pretty absurd. I, I mean, as I'm looking at this and... I mean, you mentioned it. They can have any other hero at this point, but they also have a Naga Siren. And she's just going to be able to get all the power in the world. There's not really anything stopping them from making this happen. And, I mean, even is going to try and pull this creep wave past the tower, uh, at least for a little while, which is going to uh, alleviate the situation somewhat. I mean... Everywhere they go, they've got the Blink Dagger up on the Batrider, and normally the, the reason that you would end up... Oh god, hold on. This might end up being a, a kill on the Slark. I oh, don't know, they're not going to go for it. But what I was saying there is that this would normally be the point where you would go for like a Drums or something else on the Batrider, but they actually have enough burst damage to actually find kills, I think, with this. And, and that's why they're ended up going for it this early. He's invisible. It's fine. <laughs> if that was any other rune, he would not. He would be dead right now. But is able to survive through it. And yeah, this is. It's getting a little bit nuts because again, there's just been no real great response. I've been taking a look at the CS, but more importantly, like the net worth, the three throws for newbie right now, like uh, three cores are on top. And I mean, faceless void. Yes, he's getting farm. Uh, but what's this really going to transition into? All he has is treads at this point, and he might even end up going down here if they end up being able to find somebody to kind of... I don't think that they can do it. Lasso's on cooldown. This is becoming a really, really dire situation, and I, I don't see a great way for them to turn it rapidly, because all of the heroes for Nubia are either A, going to be able to get away from a, a jump top of them, or B, they, they just out-man fight them. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Hmm. 
Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I'm, I'm also looking at this, and uh, Disruptor ended up just being fed a uh, a Tome of Experience by the Earthshaker, which gives him level 6. And now, oh, almost able to get a jump there onto NZWAP, but not going to be able to find the Slark as of yet. So they do have now Disruptor Radiance ulti up and online. If they want to, and they're able to find a, a quick kill, like, you can't really come in now on the side of Cheeky Reborn and contest this tier tower in the lane. Because if they do, they're just going to get Static Storm glimpsed away. This is just really great aggression, and um, well, all right, yeah, comes in, he ends up being able to take it down. Now maybe going to also be able to break the Mikasa. There's going to be the false promise, keeping him alive for the moment, but in the midst of that storm, it's just too much damage. I think he's still going to end up going down. Oh my god. Oracle, are you kidding me? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm sort of debating now the move with Dagger Pickup. I'm feeling like it could have been better to go back the drums. The fact that DDC already has a level 6 up means that he can't find that initial pickoff anymore. And it really does cause a problem that they don't have that burst damage that they would need to be able to find. So Mikasa is going to be glimpsed back looking for the fish. Not quite enough damage. The Echo Slam. All right. He ends up being able to get that one. And that's a nice little pickup for them to finish him off. Radiant's bottom tower is hmm. under attack. They're gonna run into KP here, and he doesn't have his song. He needs to get out of here. Oh, in a lot of trouble. They oh, they went down. I think he might be able to escape. All right, Fortune's end. The rest of the side of Newbie is gonna be here to try and keep him alive. They're gonna TP in now, and oh, he walked into it. All right, maybe gonna be able to kill off KP. That's a really big one. And I think with that, though, they might have overstepped their bounce slightly. They're gonna be able to pull back Yang. They do get the false promise rather often. Mikasa should still die here, so they'll get one, but probably not more than that, I don't think. Ah, uh, yes. Well, DDC, he's in some trouble. Meanwhile, actually over on the other side, it looks like Faceless Void was able to take out Chuan. So a two-for-one exchange. It's starting to look, though, like Beachy Gaming Reborn are realizing what's going to happen to them, and they're reacting. You look at the item build right now for Faceless Void, he already has a Battle Fury. So he is going to be able to sort of counter out the heavy push that's going to be coming with this uh, Radiance on the Naga Siren. So there's the pieces there for Beachy Gaming Reborn to actually take us a little bit later. It's just all going to depend upon this timing and what they're capable of getting done uh, with this KP and that Radiance.
I, I would agree. I, I think that it's still a problem, though, as we are going to end up seeing the big stomp come through. Kaka on a lot of trouble. He might just go down here. They get the last purifying flames to find the kill. So that stomp ends up being able to set up a kill. The one thing I would say, though, is that as I'm looking at more and more of the items, Vichy Gaming Reborn believe that they can take this late. You've got a Slark Midas now. You've got, as we were talking about, the Battle Fury on this uh, Yang Faceless Void. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering, maybe if we end up seeing FY go back for a Midas himself, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And he does already have that Gloves of Haste, but I don't know. What's your thoughts? Do you think that if they end up getting like a pretty significant amount of farm, they're going to be able to, to actually compete late game against the Naga Siren? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Well, at least for now, it looks like we're going to have to wait for the next flurry of action. Haka still trying to Radiant's save up for his own. Uh, Bullet Dagger is getting pretty close, and we'll be able to get there in a decent amount of time. But the big thing that I'm sort of a little bit concerned about now is that you're 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 feeling like you're a little bit bottled in by newbie now. And if you get picked off, if the Naga Siren uh, is still farming like great radiance, it doesn't end up meaning that you can just take team fights over and over again. If VGR really pushed the the envelope a little bit, not only can they deal with the illusions and split push, they're still the stronger team right now in terms of the damage that they deal, as long as they don't get initiated upon. So you're seeing this gank come through and. If they end up being able to find the lifesteal here, how is it going to be in a ton of trouble? And that's going to be the Chronosphere drop. They have the arrow follow-up. Going to end up throwing it out there. The leap midair getting caught out. That's a kill. Meanwhile, Orc jumps upon Kaka's here as well. They throw out the Fissure. DDC in a little bit of trouble. And he ends up popping his ultimate. Going to try and get out of there. But I'm pretty sure that it's curtains for him. They go up with the Flame Break. And that's going to find the kill. Dyer's top top is under attack. You know, this to me right here, as I'm looking at it, it, it was it was another good play. Yang was able to blink out because he got caught in the uh, the the Naga Siren song, and so he was able to not take any damage from the Static Storm, and then blinks away. Like it's it's little plays like that that to me are feeling like Vichy Gaming Reborn are just on top of it. They're make they're playing better. Newbie have the better draft, I think. They have all of the answers that they need, but they're just generally getting outplayed right now. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's a little bit of the break that we've been seeing. Uh, certainly, Vichy Gaming and Reborn have been playing more officials, having to go through the qualifiers themselves, but they're not looking as good as they have previously. And um, I mean, it's if they're not careful, they could end up losing it here. Bottom lane, Kaka out a lot of trouble. He do end up getting brought down. They're not even going to be able to kill off this faceless boy, I don't think. Well, maybe. All right. Static Storm drop down. They do end up catching him, and that's going to be enough. So he's going to fall now. The glimpse was good enough, and DDC is going to get dropped as well. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. 
So I'm looking at this now, the state of the game as it stands, Newbie, they got off to a really hot start with their lead, built up 3,000 gold, and it, since then it went back into the favor of VGR, and now it's starting to swing back into the favor of Newbie again. I'm kind of curious, over the next couple of minutes, if we're going to be able to see Vici Gaming Reborn keep up with the level of harm that this Naga Siren is going to be getting, and how is it that they're actually going to be taking these fights if they do indeed want to take them at all? I feel like this right now has to be a game much more built around move and how finding kills while KP just farms and pushes out of the waves. Um, that being said, Kaka may be a little bit of trouble, does turn it around, and maybe gonna be able to kill off two here. Kata and Yang drop the low. Can they find this kill? The Radiance Bird is not quite there. Yang is gonna get glimpsed back, and this might be enough to finish them off. They drop the Chrono Tamir, ends up being able to get the false promise. That's FY control for the moment. I think Yang is gonna actually survive from this one, and this thing, no, he ends up dropping. There wasn't enough heals. Four dead. Just as I'm talking about Newbie, they end up being able to destroy the triple for Moo. Exceptionally well played. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Radiance top tower is under attack. Doesn't look like it, but who? Oh, they're not gonna get her. Um, well, if she walks back this direction, um, Mikasa, you need to be a little bit careful. They'd use the scan, thinking he's gonna be over in that direction, but they might just actually check over here. They should realize that he's in the area. Oh god! Oh, Mikasa! No, Kaka is finding him enough trying to run away. Why did you come out of the trees? I guess it wouldn't have mattered anyways. The TP was on cooldown, and they end up being able to find the kill. Mu again, godlike streak. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. That was so absurd, and the, the fact that they've got these travels and can consistently go for these kills just goes to show how dominant this lineup can be when it's working right. And to me, I almost feel like Newbie were listening to what we were saying. They weren't performing well, they weren't executing properly, and they've completely turned it around. And it feels like they've sort of fallen back into their rhythm a little bit. With this Nagasar having the Radiance, they've, you know, started moving around KP to get his farm going, and then is going to try and find those ganks across the map uh, with Kaka as well as Hao. So I'm really liking what we're seeing from them so far. The BKB is going to be up and online for the Void, so maybe that ends up giving them a little bit more survivability. VGR, unfortunately, now 7,500 net worth behind. The experience is not quite as significant. I just don't know if these misses are going to end up making enough of a difference.
Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. You know, and we just saw already, it, it feels like it's a little bit of desperation almost. I mean, Beach Gaming Reborn, the Marana just sold, I think, like her bracer and something else to be able to get the Agon Scepter. And, uh, the, you know, Kaka just realizing trouble is coming his way. He blinks back Radiant's and is not going to get caught. They've got attack. such good realization of where Beachy Gaming Reborn attack. are. Everybody's heading out. Dying Nobody is going to get caught as gank. And the whole time through, you've still got KP cutting the creep place. They're just doing everything that they need to right now. And, Yang is going to move in and try and take down this tower. They do have been able to get it, but it does not feel like they are going to be able to really make any significant progress with this. Oh, glimpse back into the static storm. Yang going to be controlled. Brought down, killed. Oh, and they got DDC as well. They were able to jump forward. He wanted to go for the false promise, but ends up getting it interrupted. And Echo Slam solo. He's still going to end up falling here. No way to stop it. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, a little bit more. KP is now caught FY. Everybody, Beachy Gaming Reborn, is just being destroyed. He does get a lift up there with the Yule Scepter. But body blocks of the Naga Siren Illusions. But more importantly, one right click from How. They find the kill. 1024 and newbie has not looked back. Radiant structures are fortified. Uh. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle barracks has fallen. Radiant's middle barracks has fallen. Back. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. He's playing a spectacular game, and you, you talked about that. You said that they're not all playing together. Look at the way that newbie did that last little engagement where they Oracle. They went in all together. The Batrider jumped in. How he was going to jump in immediately afterwards, and found a quick pick off. But then it ended up taking the tier three tower and then backed. And there's just been like nothing about this game really after the 20 minute mark that newbie has not been performing well. It's just been a really really good exhibition. Um, I'm kind of curious at this stage too, like you talked about it, that BKB charge up on the Faceless Void, he bought it out so that that way he didn't have buy back, and because of that, they ended up losing a lane of Barrack and a tier 3 tower, and then he used it to save himself. Like you said, just, uh, greedy plays and not all on the same because it didn't feel like the rest of BGR wanted to take that. So, a little bit of, you know, kerfuffle going this first round of the playoff racket. Radiant's bottom barracks are under attack. Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. Radiant's bottom barracks has fallen. Uh oh. My god, newbie are so strong. 
and you look at this, like at, at the net worth graph, at that 20 minute mark, the 22 minute mark roughly, it just, it was a cascade of problems, just item after item, fight after fight. They took it to their own advantage. And this to me, it, it perfectly epitomizes Newbie Dota. Um, they were running it before and it shows that it's not dependent upon a patch. It's just the way that they play the game. They take the fights that they know that they're going to win and then they move on from there. Thank you so much for joining me, Mike Loris. Everybody follow him on Twitter if you feel 